jab right here. There's jab right here. Yeah. We really try to aim for operators that are both fun to play alone and with your team, that are real assets in the way you attack or defend an objective. Nomad comes from this wealthy Moroccan family. She got to travel a lot as she grew up, and as she got older, she decided to travel on her own. So she's recruited for being really tough, being able to endure any kind of weather, pretty much. She wants to become the first woman to travel in Antarctica alone on foot, and that requires a lot of resilience. When it comes to creating characters, it's always about iteration. It's about talking with other writers, other illustrators, other game designers, and just pitching ideas back and forth about what kind of scenarios they might find themselves in. And just the idea of what do we imagine the modern Moroccan woman may be. And I think it'd be cool to have her as a traveler. So I pitched that idea, went for that angle, and a lot of people liked it. The Air Jab launcher came about when she went on a solo expedition in Kenya and she wanted to find a way to push back the predatory wildlife without hurting them. It felt a bit underwhelming to just have a frag grenade. So we wanted to add some punch into it. So basically pushing people back was really like the obvious thing to add to the gadget to make it really useful and cool at the same time. This new mechanic of displacement uh, with the, the pushback effect that we really liked, uh, that was uh, put during the uh, outbreak event with uh, the big zombie, like uh, slapping you. And you, you should see the face of people going through walls for the first time. It's, uh, it's really funny to, to see. She's kind of a mix and match uh, for fighting, but as well traveling. So we started to look more into sportswear, to do uh, trekking into the mountain, uh, what is the military is wearing, what is compatible together. We are trying to not take something that exists exactly the same. When we have a good silhouette, uh, we go with these assets. You might notice that Nomad has missing uh, fingertips on one of her hands, and there's a whole story behind that, and I think you'll find out uh, from her what actually happened. You know, the, this guy is the, the commander. Even if he's, a, he's a, an old character, it's one of the older operators, you don't want to mess around with this character. So this is the, the presence we tried to, uh, to put visually on him. They really wanted somebody that was this imposing leader of a fortress who ha had a reign over it, and there were thousands of students that would come there to this very prestigious school that's gone on for generations and generations and fostered and cultivated a whole bunch of soldiers and past soldiers and for the future. I think that's really what's important to him and he wants to do the best job that he can. Uh, the dagger was an, an important thing for us because the commander passed to each other uh, when we are in charge in the fortress. So when one is going, a new dagger is forged for the new commander. As long as he's the commander of the, the fortress, he will always wear it proudly on him. For the beard, we explored a ton of stuff to the classic, to the hipster beard, <laughs> but in the end, uh, it goes with the, the story of the character. This guy is so organized, his beard should be trimmed pretty well as the character. Well, we began by just finding something to protect hatches, reinforced hatches. At first we tried with a mute effect. It was working, but not as good as uh, we expected. So we just wanted to try with electricity. For his spider claw or the Artilla electro claw, uh, as it's officially known. We, I was just doing some research and I remember that there are, in the Berber mountains, there are these spiders that are like cartwheeling spiders. And I thought, oh, maybe it'd be cool if growing up in the mountains, he had developed a love for those spiders. And then why not affix that love for those spiders onto his gadget? We reworked the electricity look uh, because it was kind of subtle, <laughs> like uh, before, um, specifically on walls. So now it's really clear, like you see the, the big electrical arcs coming from metallic uh, parts, and you don't have to try to just tickle the wall to see if, he, if it reacts. It's really clear from afar now. Commander in Moroccan Arabic is Kaid, and they're like, that's perfect, that totally goes with the, all the other operating names that we have. His real name, his civilian name is Jalal El Fasi. And Jalal is actually a nod to one of our tech guys here because he had spent so much time working on the game and he is Moroccan. It's funny that a game named Siege hasn't had a castle or any sort of fortress until now. 
But with Commander Cade's family Kazba, it finally fills that hole in our lineup. We really wanted to bring the rainbow world and lore to life in a new way that hadn't been done before. And a lot of times our maps, while they have a story standpoint, it doesn't feel as connected, especially to the operators. But this way we could start to bring players in and they may actually start to look at the map and learn more of an operator's story from it. In this case, we use the operator's story to inform all of our room designs and layouts. There's a museum for Commander Kaid's family in which all the daggers of previous commanders are there. For this fortress, in fact, at the beginning, uh, I started to look uh, to the classic Morocco because we always want the, the player to have this feeling of traveling, uh, going somewhere never, never been before in the game. It's more a feeling when you go to a, to a specific place, like the, the dust, the sand, uh, what do you feel when you're there? So I think the overall colorful feeling the sand, the dust, the heat from the sun, I think you can really feel it now in the map. Many people on the team, including one of the art directors, is Moroccan. And they were able to, as I designed and worked, just lend real day-to-day, on-the-ground insight to like how these structures work and why people are living in them or doing these certain things. And that allowed me to see it in a new way that you don't get from just reading about it. We began to really make the map feel different. We actually started all the map um, conceptual prototypes and layouts from real world Casbah architectural plans. We really tried to take all the inspiration we could from Morocco as a country and it has very unique architecture that when applied to maps will change the gameplay in ways other maps haven't had. One way is exterior staircases. Even on their Kasbahs and in the map fortress, there are many exterior stairs that like, it gives attackers new and unparalleled opportunity to get onto the roof and project power downwards. And this is gonna be an interesting situation defenders are gonna to have to cope with. As opposed to other traditional maps, the rooftop space is used as a living space. It's a very cool, natural place to relax. So the rooftop, as opposed to previous maps, it's usually deader space because no one's on the roof now is much more open and presents more opportunities than maps previously because it's someplace that people live. I built over 30 maps, honestly, for Morocco to try to finally get this one right because you never know what if we change this aspect of the Casbah. What if we include one less tower? How does it change this? We're always working through that iterative until we finally lock down on one that everyone can agree represents the new map the best and plays the best. With Wind Bastion, instead of just checking the meta, just trying now to reinforce it and to add more options around it, but in a really different flavor. That's uh, what we, we were aiming at.